Now, I am really thrilled to introduce you to Dr. Godsey Yusel. She has such an interesting story and one that has unfolded in different ways that I think many of you will relate to. Kismet, a Turkish American woman's unlikely story of race, love, and personal transformation. So, Ghazi, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Tell me what made you write the book. Why did you desire to write the book? What led you in that direction? Um, yeah, so I was having a really hard time with my life at that moment. Um, this is about four years ago when uh, I separated from my ex. And uh, and someone suggested that I should try to journal, you know, how to put down my emotions and uh, each that should be helpful for me to process all these things. Because I I'm a scientist, so I grew up with like, okay, get over with it, like with my culture and all, like, you know, we don't really necessarily um, process our emotions. So this was one of the things that was suggested to me. And so I started journaling my emotions and what happened that day. And it was really helping me. And then after a while, it, there were so many of them that I was like, maybe I, sh- I should make this a book. So that's how it happened. But the reality is I really wanted to reach out to people out there who are going through similar things that I did, and maybe they could get some kind of, you know, courage from my book or, you know, think that they're not alone. That was the original idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you have resilience, and that is really splattered throughout the book. I mean, you grew up in kind of a Turkish suburb. Well, that's what you did grow up in. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're transported to uh, the craziness of New York. (laughs) And so you had to weave through a different culture. And, you know, you say it in the in the title, then you have to navigate divorce and you have to find that hope and you have to find the resilience you had and figure out what you're going to do next. So, and you said you're a scientist. So tell us about that. Tell us about the journey of being a female scientist in one country and then coming to the United States. Yes. So um, actually, I always liked science um, growing up. My my dad is a medical doctor and my mom is a dentist. So I grew up in a kind of science related family. So that kind of, I think, put me in that route. But I also really liked math and biology. Um, so I picked this special science high school um, to go so that I could concentrate more on science. That's how the the journey started. Um, and then I got into biology department uh, in Turkey, in Ankara. Um, and it was, I think, the second year I took this class, genetics, from someone who's been outside of Turkey. I think he was doing, he did his PhD in um, United Kingdom. And he was so knowledgeable and he got, you know, us this really big, thick book of genes five, I remember. And I knew English then. So I was like, really amazed by genetics and i was like okay i think i want to do something with this and that was i think the the main point where i made a decision okay i think i want to become a scientist not not a teacher or not a technician at some hospital which were the choices back at home but i do want to become a scientist i want to do research that's when i decided to go to United States for, you know, for my doctoral degree. Yeah. And you've certainly have done well with that. What I love about the book and, and pay attention to this, everybody, right in the very beginning, you you show your vulnerability and you talk about that you hear these sirens and you hope it's the paramedics and you think about the baby that you're carrying and you say your third pregnancy wasn't planned and you really wanted a girl and your family had moved back from Atlanta, Georgia, you were struggling and that your ex-husband was the only one working. But, you know, you talk about what I think many 
people can relate to listening to this here in the United States and elsewhere. You talk about an expensive place. You couldn't go back to Palo Alto, which is right around where Stanford is because the rents were crazy, crazy, crazy. So now you're dealing with navigating all of that. What is it, what is it like for you? What was it like for you when you talk about it in, in the book where you have to deal with divorce and young, young children? How tough was that? Um, it was very tough, very tough, especially making the decision. This was the right decision because my kids were so young. You know, I struggled with it a lot. You know, I was like, am I making the right choice? You know, I don't want my kids to grow up as, you know, uh, kids from a divorced family, um, two households. I, I never wanted that for my kids and they as you said they were so young but I had to make the choice of choosing myself and my mental health my well-being because in the end I have to be good I have to be the mom the healthy mom for them if I could do that then they'll be good that's the decision that was the decision point and I was like okay I have to choose myself and in the end, I'm choosing my kids this way. It was very hard, very, very hard. It was one of the hardest things I had to go through in my life. But I'm on the other side of it. So I'm 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 good. <laughs> I like that you see you're on the other side of it. And there's something to that and that and this book and talking about the stories. And we're speaking with Dr. Godsey Yusel and talking about what it was like moving from Turkey and then you're in a big city and then you have this young family and you make the decision you have to do what's right for you because how would you be be good for them? And even, you know, one of your beginning chapters is me, myself, and I. And really, like you said, in your culture, and we see this in the American culture, it's although people are trying to change that, it's not about self, it's about everybody else and not showing your emotions. And how tough is that to navigate? Yes, that's very, that's very true. And, and especially become being a scientist. Uh, and this is a big thing. Like, we always believe that emotions, you know, uh, don't belong in science or where we do science. But on the contrary, everyone has emotions. We have to deal with them or we have to navigate them. So you actually have to accept that they, they are there. Thinking that they're not there is never going to work. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So when people read your book, what do you hope they walk away with? Um, I think the most important point is like, like you were mentioning just now is self-love. And I had to learn this after the age of 40. Um, it's really important to love yourself and accept yourself. And and it is very hard, but that's the, the way to go to live your life, I think. Um, and I think that's the biggest takeaway of the book. But also, I get into mental health a lot and a lot of the things that I've done with the trauma work. And I think it's really important to deal with your trauma from past. Everyone has a trauma from past, like from their childhood. But it's important what we do with it, right? There are very different ways out there. You can find your own way, but it's very important to heal yourself, the inner child, to go on with your life. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. Tell us about the trauma and, and we're not going to tell everyone everything, but <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. It's really important and everyone has something. So for you, what was that that you had to overcome and that made this big difference for you? Um, I mean, th there's there was a lot of stuff in, in the childhood that um, I also mentioned in the book. Um, and I, I have to say, like, I, I didn't know, like, I have, I had to talk to a therapist um, to really understand what I really went through, you know, as a child. Um, and so one of the things that I think growing up in, in Turkey and in the family that I did, 
I had this like understanding of like, I didn't value a lot. You know, I, I'm not saying this is what my parents did. I don't think they did anything wrong. It's just the way it happened. That's what I believe. I didn't, I wasn't worth a lot for some reason, you know, the things happened to me. And at first I had to fix that, really understand what, that I actually value, I'm, I'm important. So that's the thing that I had to realize first. Right, is that it makes sense. And for people listening, for for many of you, it goes back to that same thing. Does this make you want to write another book? Um, I wasn't thinking at first, but more and more now, like all the reactions that I've been getting, definitely I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Yes. Nice. That's a compliment. And by the way, you can get the book, like I said before, Amazon's a great place because you can get Kindle, you can get hardcover, you can get paperback, all the ways people like to consume books available to you by going there. You can get Dr. Yusel's book, Kismet, a Turkish woman's, American woman's unlikely story of race, love and personal transformation. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. at www.greatwritersmedia.com Email us at info at greatwritersmedia.com Or call us at plus one eight seven seven five five six zero four eight seven.